Hi guys and good morning from London 7.40, uh, Friday the 14th of June, last day trading day of the, the week. We'll have a quick look over the markets, how we're trading currently, uh, just coming into the EU cash open. We'll have a look at uh, the market moves from yesterday, the headlines from overnight uh, and the calendar for the remainder of the day and we'll have a quick look ahead at next week. Quick look over the charts just to begin with as we are. Uh, seeing a bit of risk off in the market. Uh, we saw a bit of this yesterday, most notably gold, which we'll come on to in just a moment, just pushing up to uh, its higher point. But T notes, as you can see here, just bring in, in, in into the picture. It's now at the high of the day. Worth probably keeping an eye on this, this trend, which we're not far from testing, would also come in uh, in line perhaps with some of these highs. But T notes back up to the higher levels that it's had for quite some time, uh, helped, of course, by uh, tensions between Iran and US yesterday, uh, the dovish Fed as well, which has helped gold, which has helped gold push on. You can see here a really strong push this morning up to and above 13. Uh, 50, 1357 trading. Having a look at this on the, the longer term chart, you can see just how high we are. The top level here that I've just drawn a, a horizontal line on, it goes back to the 11th or the week of, I should say, the 11th and uh, 20, 11th and 5th of July 2016. Not too far away from that. Could easily do that in a, in a day. Before that, worth keeping an eye, uh, of course, on this trend line. So this trend line starting in 2016, we had a couple of tests in early January 18 and then April as well. Uh, we're not too far away from trading that on the week. Uh, can we make it? Can we finally break out? I know someone who has been calling this for a very long time, Will DeLucy, uh, will be, I'm sure, very happy to see this uh, push on. But worth noting, every time we have come back up to this level, we've seen a strong push lower. Uh, so let me know in the chat and we'll come back to this later. I just want a simple yes or, or no. Do you think gold can get back above the high of the 2016 uh, Ju July and June levels uh, by the end of the year? Currently trading uh, just above 1350. Can we finally now push higher uh, and break those levels? We'll come back onto that in a bit. Uh, perhaps really reasons why just a yes or no in the in the chat would be super. Over to the headlines from from overnight. Um, where's well, this time yesterday or just well, it was, this time yesterday it was really getting moving. Oil prices had pushed higher. Uh, we had the uh, the Gulf of Oman tanker attacks. Two of them were, were under attack and oil pushed higher. Uh, quick uh, push to well the higher the day. Uh, we then eventually did push on a, a tiny bit more. You can just see here, if I just bring oil in to picture, we had a decent move higher just after 7 o'clock yesterday on report of this. Um, if I just get around it where it was, 7 o'clock, up to those highs was over 4%. Since then, we have just traded sideways. The US have accused Iran. Iran have called those accusations unfounded. So what could this mean for, for oil price? Uh, well, at the moment, I guess the market is telling you it's not too sure. It's not too sure. While it's obviously uh, nicely above where we were trading, you know, just over or just under a dollar still, um, it is starting to, to drift back lower. Those American officials um, released images last night uh, showing that Iran was involved in the, the attack on those tankers near the entrance of the, the Persian Gulf this time yesterday. Uh, one pair of incidents that have raised tensions between the US and Iran over the past day. So it's already hostile tensions between the two. Is this going to be um, the catalyst to, to make things worse? And if so, what could that mean for markets? Because certainly yesterday, and it, it was relatively tricky. If you're coming in uh, 24 hours ago and you're seeing this for oil, push higher. Uh, it's yes, understandably oil price goes higher, but risk um, assets should appreciate, and they did, T-notes, gold, uh, and I have a quick look over at the yen, it did as well in the morning, uh, into the afternoon, sorry. Um, but equities also pushed higher, the DAX on the open higher, dragging the S&P and NASDAQ uh, to its highs as well. Um, so, I mean, from that, it perhaps didn't quite make sense. Now, 
you had the energy sector within the S&P nearly 10%, um, which would have helped drag things. We know how correlated these markets are. Uh, yes, the, the Fed are dovish, but nothing majorly new yesterday. So I was a bit surprised to see this push from 8 o'clock to be sustained. It was very choppy in the afternoon. We, there was a couple of times it looked like we were threatening to come back down. And we are a bit to an extent now, but very much contained within this range. And uh, be worth keeping an eye at 8 o'clock to see just what the DAX does. But you can see here really that lower point on the pivot yesterday 2882 to the high just below 2900 acting as resistance perhaps a bit unusual move in equities more so going off the the dovishness of the fed and helped a bit by the fact that oil price was higher rather than looking into the fact that this could be an escalation um, and gold and, and t-notes would tell you the opposite story and, and that uh, going off that risk move one to, to keep an eye on anyway, certainly now uh, in markets, just having a quick look. The DAX under a bit of pressure and the NASDAQ is actually now the lowest it's been since uh, in that half hour period after 8 o'clock yesterday. So perhaps we're seeing a bit un of an unwind here. Gold on those highs, T-notes on those highs uh, and yen, if I just have a quick look to my left, is also on its high of the day uh, and yesterday's uh, resistance level as well to worth keeping an eye on things perhaps are starting to to pick up just on the, those that, that question from gold earlier every answer so far has been a yes so it does look like you know, the sentiment is very much favoring a push higher uh, for uh, for gold there so hours before so we're going back to this story sorry hours before um, the central command provided its evidence to, to bolster the US accusations. Pompeo uh, pinned the blame on Iran but declined to take any questions. The US will defend its forces, he said, interests and stands with our partners and allies to safeguard global commerce and regional stability. Um, Pompeo said, and obviously noting that Iran had previously threatened to curtail oil transport in the, the Strait of Hormuz. Roughly 30% uh, of the world's uh, seaborne flow of crude oil and products pass through that strait each year. So nearly uh, a third of oil, of oil, all oil going through there. So a closure of that would uh, lead to major uh, disruption of, of global oil supply, supplies and evidently uh, we haven't seen that yet in the market but you would have a very big push to the upside. I mean, just looking at, at oil price here, you can see how far we have come down, uh, if that was to be the case. And this again would be an escalation over a period of, of days and weeks, but you, you're looking back towards the highs of the year if this was to be the case. I saw an interesting uh, tweet, um, yes, on the 12th, on the morning, um, and it makes you, makes you think, if you're a conspiracy theorist, you're you know, you're know, you thinking, well, someone had a bit of inside knowledge here and wanted to just to, to get along in. So this was the, the tweet um, uh, around the evening on the 12th. It says 1.45 there, but of course that's American time. Uh, crude oil has lost more than 2.5% during the day in six out of the last uh, 15 sessions, falling to a multi-month low. Six months after the other times this happened, the last 30 years, oil returned plus 47, minus 3, plus 47, plus 7, plus 33 percent and plus 44 percent. If, uh, if you like your stats, uh, what, a, what a place to have got along on oil. If you like your conspiracy theories, well someone might have just had a bit of inside knowledge. And looking at the area we're trading now in oil, this is now a, a daily continuation. Uh, certainly, and I'm just going to move the recent price action in this square. If you're looking at, at price coming down, there was certainly a zone, if you like, looking at back at the, the November, November 2018 lows, coming up to the February lows as well. It's just a, a really nice area. I know if we take our mind back to the beginning of February, uh, I remember Piers was doing a briefing talking about the inverted head and shoulders uh, here around this point. You can see. Uh, shoulder, head, shoulder, and then you've got that breakthrough. Uh, so certainly a very key level. If you look in here on the future, sort of going from 52.31 to the low there, it's not going to get it perfectly, uh, but let's just call it just let's call it 51 uh, as a as a decent area uh, of supply. We come back into that level now. A failed test to push low again. Just purely technically, it looks pretty good here. 
Uh, if we were to see an escalation, oil should push higher. Um, but just to where I think will be will be pretty key. Uh, I think it would be out the woods if you like, and, and maybe drift higher if we can get back above this key level from the 8th of March. Uh, we had a recent test of d trying to do that just above $55 on the futures. Uh, that didn't want to go, and that's looking around 55 16 uh, If we can get back above there, certainly medium term bulls will 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 be uh, favouring a, a push higher. One to uh, keep a, a watchful eye on uh, anyway. Uh, so back to, uh, well, back to the, the, the headlines from, from overnight. Um, and there's a, there's a really good, I think I've still got it on my email here, uh, report, if you like, from uh, John Kemp, uh, who works at, uh, at Reuters as a market analyst. I'll send this out to uh, our guys, but anyone watching, um, feel free to to, e uh, to tweet me your your email or whatever, and I can send this over, or at least a, a link uh, to it, uh, where it uh, just sort of goes over the the risks of an uncontrolled escalation. And it's a it's a fairly lengthy report, as you can see, but something to read over the weekend. Prepare you yourselves for the next week. I think could certainly be uh, you know a bit of light reading on Sunday, uh, Father's Day here to. To take uh, to take into account what could potentially happen over the coming days uh, or so, um, it, it goes on to this report anyway. Just talking about the, the current state of high tension, hawkish elements in both the U.S. administration and the Iran, not just now but recently. But this may exploit uh, an incident to push respective leaders to to escalate here. And the vulnerability of the tankers of the Strait of Hormuz is precisely the sort of incident that could spark an unplanned and uncontrolled escalation. 30% of all oil going through there, or seaborne oil I should say, going through there every year. This is a large amount. This could be a massive issue. Uh, at the moment the market's telling me or telling us that it's not too bothered. If you're talking about something so big and if we go back to, to oil just quickly here on the chart and I tell you that it is up just after seven here we go and it's just at 1.3 percent i'm sorry but the market's telling you it's not interested right now worth being of course aware of what could happen uh, and the escalation that comes with that just as we see the yen just breaking above that resistance from last night t notes above the high uh, and gold trying to push above a key level uh, from before uh, but just being worth worth being aware just how uh, important this area is uh, Hormuz is, is not necessarily the most important or uh, because of the volume of oil that flows through but because of an ultra tense flashpoint that could spark a much broader conflict uh, between both sides and they although while insisting they do not want this uh, and I don't necessarily think it's going to happen uh, it would lead to oil price pushing on uh, and on so any comments that, that come out throughout the day today worth keeping an eye on it does almost seem that this has just been pushed to the side this morning. I would have expected, to be honest, a bit more in the way of commentary overnight. I would expect him to come in and, and perhaps see oil a bit higher following comments. To be honest, it doesn't look like this is much more of a story right now. Any escalation, any further accusations, I'll be looking for oil longs. Uh, and that might just be what saves the S&P here as your safe havens are, are pushing higher, admittedly helped by uh, perhaps a weaker dollar, although the dollar index right now is pretty much flat for the day. Elsewhere, trade comments. Um, well, tr yeah, trade comments uh, overnight. Obviously, Trump yet again speaking to to reporters. He was saying yesterday how he's still waiting for a response from Xi. Uh, it's an interesting one. One with trade. Uh, having a look over, we'll just bring the S&P up. You can see yesterday helped by but oil as we mentioned but it's choppy if we have a look at the the week where we open I'm going to draw that horizontal line there we had a brief push below and now back above another up week but range bound choppy no real developments in trade and I think that's the way to look at it I think he's gonna step up the hawkish ante especially if Xi doesn't confirm they're gonna meet at the G20 at the back end of this month and that in turn would lead to stocks just coming down a touch while I've said Repeatedly, I think there will be a deal done uh, and stocks will break the all-time highs again. The timing of that could be tricky. And uh, just going back to what Trump 
had said, sorry, I didn't have the charts up there. Um, just having a look there at the S&P and the, the choppiness of that. The, the gap fill happened uh, Wednesday, Thursday, but we're now back above. So going back to those comments from, uh, from Trump yesterday uh, and Larry Kudlow as well uh, was speaking uh, while warning Beijing they may face consequences if it refuses the invitation. He was saying Trump has indicated his strong desire for a meeting. We know this, uh, but the meeting is not yet arranged formally. So I would just start from that and see how it plays out. Uh, he was saying this in Washington. Gold again is pushing higher. So if you're if you're in this position here, gold, you know, just pushing on above 13.55, 13.58 trading uh, at the moment. Asked if possible, they won't meet. Kudlow replied, "I don't even want to comment on it. I'm just saying my president has indicated a strong desire to sit and meet. He's also indicated that the meeting doesn't come to bear. There may be consequences, but he would prefer the meeting." Uh, so the 28th and 29th Japan, that is when the meeting is, is going to be. Uh, whether that happens or not will move markets. So over the weekend, keeping a, an ear out for any developments on that, any developments for, for oil as well will be what potentially drives these markets going into uh, next week. Uh, at the moment, well, last month, as, as those trade talks broke down, Trump raised tariffs on $200 billion of Chinese imports and started the process to slap another $300 billion, uh, which will cover virtually all remaining goods coming into the US from the world's second largest economy. Uh, so we'll keep an eye. We'll keep an eye on that. Um, we'll have a quick look over the, uh, the calendar. If I just bring this into picture here for next week or at least the, the rough plan for now. This is currently what we're expecting. So no, uh, you'll notice on here, nothing to do with, with Trump as of yet. So I'll keep an eye uh, throughout the day today to update this. But it's, it's a central bank heavy weekend, uh, week I should say. You've got uh, Wednesday the, the Fed, uh, Thursday or Wednesday overnight, you've got uh, the Bank of Japan, and then you have uh, the Bank of England uh, as well on there. I was going to say, yeah, there you can see Bank of England also on Thursday. So speaker wise in the build up to that is going to be limited. Uh, so worth obviously just planning ahead on the days you really want to be involved. Likelihood is, I mean, just looking at Monday, just how quiet that's going to be when you've got the, the Fed on Wednesday, Tuesday likely to be the same. You've got a bit of European data out in the morning, but likelihood is Monday and Tuesday are going to be quiet. Uh, as we build up into the Fed uh, in, in the evening, 7 o'clock UK time. Uh, we'll, of course, go through this uh, in a lot more detail on Monday, uh, but it remains to, to be seen if there is any developments overnight, uh, over the weekend, regarding uh, what the Fed might do. Currently, it's looking like they are going to hold rates as they are. Uh, yesterday, anyway, it was about a 24% chance they were going to cut, according to the Fed watch tool. Uh, so it could be a, a pretty good uh, one two trade that that evening uh, one uh, that evening release 7 p.m. UK, uh, UK time and then the, the press conference uh, from Jerome Powell half an hour uh, later. Moving on to Brexit. Um, if I just bring in the picture here, give me one second. So this was how we finished. The first round of the, the ballot here, Boris Johnson, uh, 114 votes above the 105 threshold you would need to be in the last two. Uh, he's going to be there, barring a major surprise. We're just having some Chinese data coming out here. Retail sales, better than expected. Industrial production, worse than expected. So mixed data there uh, from, uh, from China. Not going to move the markets too much uh, unless they were both better or worse, worth keeping an eye on uh, uh, stocks, how they move here and, uh, and the Aussie as well, which came under a bit of pressure just to, to divert here. The Aussie dollar uh, came under pressure as we are now looking at another rate cut. The New Zealand dollar also under pressure uh, this morning following some poor data. Back to Brexit, uh, just having a look at those that did make the cut, Boris Hunt, Michael Gove, Dominic Raab, Javid Hancock, although reports overnight that he is going to quit, uh, and Rory Stewart, fair play to him for getting through. Nice to see a bit of fresh air 
uh, into politics. The, the three that didn't quite make it, Lidsom, who was at one point the third favourites, even yesterday was near the favourites, unbelievably, uh, and Harper and McVeigh not making uh, the cut. Just having a, a quick look at the, the plan, I did a, a tweet on this yesterday. Uh, so we do, well, this is quite a good one from BBC Politics. Uh, again, I can send this out. Uh, so each candidate needs uh, eight MP backers. We've done that first round where the 17 votes was the cutoff point. Seven of those got through. Hancock may go. We go into the second round, which is on Tuesday, uh, where they now need 33. Uh, we will then have another vote Wednesday, Thursday, and on all on Thursday, if needed, to get us down to uh, the two in terms of the the debates we do have one on sunday on channel four uh in the evening however this was yesterday going off yesterday not all candidates are confirmed the bbc to also hold a live event 8 p.m on tuesday this is going to be two hours after the second ballot uh, vote results are released uh, so worth keeping an eye uh, on that into the evening. Um, further ballots needed, as I mentioned, on Wednesday and Thursday until we are down to the two. And then the voting begins on the 22nd. Four weeks later, we will know who the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom is. BBC, ITV and Sky News are all expected to host debates as well. Um, uh, so worth keeping an eye on developments for that. They haven't been confirmed as of yet, but you you got to imagine they're gonna 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 want to to get on um, as well. Actually, just having a look at that in industrial production number, uh, it was actually a fair bit worse. Uh, so worth keeping an eye on 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 stocks here, just if you were to to get a follow through. Coming in at five percent uh, down, point four uh, of the expected figures. And again, if you like conspiracy theories, you also know. Uh, that Chinese data perhaps might be meddled with uh, a touch. So moving uh, moving on, let's have a quick look at uh, just the those votes and and how things had changed. If we have a quick scroll down, Boris, you know, before um, the vote, and I'm going to say it again and again because they're so useful to follow this this Guido Forks. You can see they released before how the candidates stand in the build up. Uh, obviously from public MP backing. Uh, there's about 70% of MPs that are publicly backed and you can see all of this here is up. No, nothing is down. It's very, very uh, accurate. Of course, it's going to go up as more MPs uh, have to vote on these days. So definitely worth keeping an eye on this website and on their Twitter in the build up for Tuesday. The pound reaction that we saw yesterday, I'm just gonna bring this in, it's probably actually exactly unbelievably where we were give or take two ticks uh, from where we were at one o'clock following the the, uh, the release of the vote uh, so Boris Johnson more than expected now you could have argued if that was to be the case uh, a week ago uh, the pound would be on the the lows of the session uh, however in the build-up to uh, this vote yesterday and, and Monday and Tuesday he came out and was a lot less hawkish on the idea of a no deal so this is obviously positive for the pound uh, so therefore uh, that downsize was downside was limited uh, Rory Stewart getting through I think was the reason perhaps we pushed a bit higher can he gather any further momentum but in reality to stop Boris winning this is gonna be very very tricky I watched a bit of, of question time yesterday which I find so hard because they just shout at each other and uh, it's not very pleasant watching, uh, but there, um, they, you know, there you had people digging out Boris. You had people sticking up for him. Uh, he, he, he's almost not having to do a single bit of work here uh, to, to get this to get this job. Whether he can actually get anything through and, and and whatnot, I'm not too sure. But I stand by what I said yesterday. I think he's the only Conservative MP that could win the next general election. So perhaps it's time for people to put the party. Uh, ahead of, of their political uh, beliefs, uh, we, we should we should uh, we shall see. Uh, looking at the calendar for the remainder of the day, if I just bring this into picture here, we've had that U uh, Chinese data out overall mix. We did have some better, but the industrial production was worse, uh, just on the lower bound of the range, so not enough perhaps to spark a, a massive move lower. 
Going into this morning, we have some Italian CPI. We've just had Tommaso back from, from Italy, so I'm hopefully I'll be able to get a bit of inside trading knowledge on, on that one. 130, the US retail sales, always a choppy release, short-term volatility. If it's really bad, it might just help um, those uh, ideas that another rate uh, or uh, that a rate cut is going to happen. Uh, we'll, we, we again shall see on, on that. Uh, 215 industrial production, business inventories at three along with Michigan sentiment, the preliminary figure there, 98 expected from the previous uh, 100. Speaker wise, ECB's Lautenschlager at 11 and Bank of England's Carney at 155. Worth keeping an eye on Carney as of course we do have the uh, central bank meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, yesterday, on uh, Thursday, I should say. Here, just looking at the, let's see if I can just zoom in on this. I just put this together roughly yesterday. Um, if you just give me a second, if you can see this, I think you can. I'm just going to work out how I can remove the thing on the left. There we go. Uh, so this is roughly put together. Uh, of course, Wednesday and Thursday are going to be an interesting 24 hours regarding central banks. Um, recent talk, the Federal Reserve have obviously been the most dovish. The Bank of Japan likely to keep things the same, but a lot of talk about them having to lower interest rates. Uh, so any talk on that or uh, there's been rumours of the, the Japanese version of the TLTRO, the European version of that, the Japanese version of that, or uh, paying banks to lend. Uh, has also been rumoured. Any talk or development on that would see a decent move uh, lower for, for the yen in a currency that has been strengthening so much recently due to uh, safe haven flows and trade war uh, stagnation. Uh, so it could be a, an interesting one. The Bank of England, if anything, have been more hawkish out of out of the free. Uh, Bank of England MPC members saying that the, the next move may well have to be a rate rise and that the market isn't pricing that in again expected to hold uh, at 0.75 but the vote split will be interesting the bloke vote split will be interesting there on the Thursday and you can see here just about uh, the Fed expectations at the moment according to the Fed watch tool 24% chance of a cut 76% 76% chance of no change and of course 0% chance of a hike for me that's a really good opportunity uh, should we then get a cut and you would likelihood see uh, a fast money move for weakness of the dollar and that could well get gold quite um, quite high above those key levels. So having a look at gold here, uh, you can see just the extent of that move uh, today and really in June, really pushing on here. Uh, worth keeping a closer eye on that going into uh, the remainder of the session. As usual, any questions please uh, do let me know. Um, I hope you all have uh, a great trading day and uh, an even better weekend. And for anyone listening uh, in Canada, congratulations to the Toronto Raptors for, for winning uh, the NBA championships. Um, it's uh, going to be a relatively quiet morning here, I would say. Uh, but certainly where we finish the week will be uh, interesting going into a very key one next week with the central bank meetings uh, as well. But I hope you have a, a good trading day and a good week ahead.